There is always something in pop culture that we're looking forward to, whether it's a new video game, a new movie, a new comic book, or a new series, or a new collectible. Pop culture, there's always something to look forward to. As soon as we get one thing and we have it for a bit, we're thinking, when's the next? And this is that episode of Delve Live where we're going to talk about a few video game titles that everyone is looking forward to in their respect respected platform. Plus, I'll be playing a game series that as a teenager, I always looked forward to playing. Hello, everyone. Thank you for watching another episode of Delve Live. I am Tom Morris, and this is the show where we discuss everything pop culture, what makes it so great, and have great conversations and discussion. If you haven't already, make sure you follow the page on Facebook, Delve Into the Void, and on YouTube, Delve Into the Void, where I put up the director's cuts of these episodes. And as I start going on, I'm going to put some exclusive Instagram com um, content. So make sure you're following all those platforms, like and subscribe, and leave a comment in the uh, comment section and let me know what you're interested in discussing in the weeks and episodes ahead. I want to talk about games that we are all looking forward to. Now, there are games for the Xbox Series X and S, the PlayStation 5, and the Nintendo Switch that are coming out some sooner than others. As a matter of fact, two of the games I'll be talking about are coming out tomorrow, uh, which is the 30th, or whenever you're watching, they're probably already out. But there was a particular, particular um, part that I wanted to discuss. Here is a game that I think is a PlayStation 5, well, I know it's a PlayStation 5 exclusive, but it's a game that people are looking forward to playing. And that is called Returnal. Now, Returnal is a, a game that's called like a procedurally generated. What is going to be awesome about this game is no experience is exactly the same. When you die, you have to start all over again. And when you, each time you do that, you will have different locations, I believe, different locations for weapons, different locations for items, but you start to pick up a little bit more of the story. From what I was reading, there are save points, but you can't quick save where you go. So you have to take a two to three hour campaign to get to a save point. But once you die, the playthrough starts all over again. And then you kind of kind of remember how you died and make sure it doesn't happen again. So as the planet changes each time you play it, there'll be different items in different locations and you have to figure out how the best way to use these items in different combinations. I guess they're calling this game like every loop. I think this is one of the first that really is going to take advantage of the PlayStation 5. You're going to have um, manage equipment and resources carefully. Like I say, every time you die, it's something new. You're going to piece together the fragments of Celine's memories because she crash lands on this planet. So each time you get a little bit farther, you probably hit some sequences where you kind of figure out what has truly happened to you. I want to see how it uses the haptic feedback in the controller and the triggers. Now you can probably just with a simple little click, you can change your weapon. The immersive stereo sound, 3D stereo sound, and of course, super speed, high, um, super SSD fast loading times. Time is like a tide. Shapes us. Uncovers our secrets. Hidden deep below the surface. With each rush upon us, it leaves a fresh scar behind. 
no matter how hard we fight, we can never stop it. We alone must find meaning amidst the flow. Creating our own fate. Finding our own answers. For when all is lost, the tide remains. PlayStation 5 owners, I believe you're in for a treat. I have to say, as of right now, I don't have a PlayStation 5 because really you can't find them. But I'm curious for my viewers that do, let me know if you are going to pick up Returnal and what you think about it as you play it. There's also another game coming out tomorrow that I know a lot of people are definitely looking forward to. And that is New Pokemon Snap for the Nintendo Switch. New Pokemon Snap is a game that came out, the original one I believe came out in 1999 we're at the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. 25 years. We're talking three, now there's probably three generations of Pokemon fans in the family. You are going to become a budding Pokemon photographer. Kind of think about it when the, for the, you people that have played Pokemon Go on your uh, smartphones, now you're going to play a Pokemon on your Switch and the experience is you're going around this island, the Lentel region, and these islands are gorgeous. They're filled with diverse ecosystems, dense jungles, vast deserts. And I had to pronounce this name a few times. The archipelago of the region is an untouched natural marvel, packed to the brim with Pokemon just waiting to be discovered. You are going to take the role of a budding Pokemon assistant photographer, and you are going to be the assistant to Professor Mirror and also with his assistant Rita, on an ecological survey to photograph Pokemon thriving in nature. This is going to be a fun game because you're going to be able to relax. You're going to be able to interact with Pokemon. You're going to be able to take pictures in their natural environments. You can kind of get them to do things by throwing, I guess, a fluff fruit, a tasty fruit found across the region, catch, them, catch their attention, get them to eat, get them to do various poses. As a photographer, you're always going to want to get the best shot. And then Professor Mirror is going to evaluate your scores based on the photos taken on the adventures. Anyone that has an interest in photography, we're talking photography and Pokemon. That's going to be really cool. You can fill up the Pokemon in your photo decks. And then you'll be able to, I believe you're going to be able to share these special moments with different Pokemon fans. If you're a Nintendo Switch owner and you're a fan of Pokemon, I know that's definitely one game that you're all looking forward to. There is just a few of the games that people are looking forward to that are fun, whether they're just a relaxing going through the region and shooting, uh, not shooting, taking pictures of Pokemon, 
or playing this Returnal that looks absolutely insane. You die once, you start back at the beginning, or looking forward to the pro, uh, pro excuse me, looking forward to the cross progression and cross play a Halo Infinite when that arrives, whether you're playing on Xbox, mobile, or PC, mobile through the cloud. There's something that everyone is looking forward to. Which brings us to my Delves pop question. What is something pop culture related, video game, movie, TV show, collectible, etc., that you are looking forward to? And you definitely want to leave your comments in the uh, answers in the comments below. Why I'm playing Sonic Mania on the Nintendo Switch, and this was a third party game that came out for the Nintendo Switch, Xbox uh, One, and PlayStation 4 is because I love 2D Sonic games. I always looked forward to them coming out on the Genesis. When Sonic 1 was released for the Genesis, I was looking forward to that. I went, when it was first released, went down to our local video game store at the time, and I purchased it. When Sonic 2 came out, I was really excited. My friends and I went to the uh, CES in Chicago. That was the precursor to the E3, and they had Sonic 2 demos playing, and they had this all this information on Sonic. When we got back and we reserved it, and it came out on a Sonic Tuesday. I believe that was 1992 when that came out. And so I've always had looking forward to the new Sonic games. Then we had Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast in Sonic Adventure 2. And then the Sonic games kind of went a little bit astray. Then a few years ago, this developer, I be, uh, Christian Whitehead, I believe his name, he started making some proof of concepts for mobile games for Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 and also Sonic CD that Sega kind of let him develop these games for these platforms. He came out with Sonic Mania, him and his development studio, which one of the taglines is friends to pixels and polygons I like. I think that's awesome. They came out with Sonic Mania. It's a 2D Sonic looking game uh, with some of the best levels from Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Sonic CD and kind of reimagine gameplay a little bit different, but it still keeps that feel of Sonic. So I'm always looking forward to playing Sonic games. I'm looking forward to the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie that's coming out next year, aptly named Sonic the Hedgehog 2 with Tails in it. And I'm always hoping that this year we get a proper Sonic game, whether it be 3D or 2D, that they really do justice to Sonic. That's something you didn't see every day in Sonic. One of the reasons I'm playing this is Josh, in our last episode, we were talking about if playing some of these older games, you start to lose some of your muscle memory and if it makes it harder to play. So that's one of the reasons, in, in addition, that I picked up Sonic Mania to play this week. They added some new gameplay features like the spinning attack from Sonic 2. See, this wasn't in the original Sonic. That was, uh, the spinning attack was in Sonic 2. They took some of the best uh, levels from Sonic 1, 2, 3, remade them. And I'm going to tell you right now that I am not very good at getting all these uh, blue orbs. So I'll probably just end up going back to the level here in a minute. As you start playing, it gets a little faster. Really, it really kind of uh, tests your reflexes as you go. 
Whoa. I thought they would turn to, definitely turn to rings. Like that. There's different options in this. You can do filter, you can do progressive scan lines, smooth out the pixels. I just kind of like playing, uh, make it look like the original. Different parts of the levels. A lot of the stuff is the same. Adding to it. Let's see if I can at least get to a boss fight. I forget what. Oh, yes. Catch USO, uh, UFO. That was actually in Sonic CD for the Sega CD. Sonic little polygonal there. not collect any more rings or blue orbs so I can go back to the level. Ah. So the faster you get, you can start to catch up to the... I'm over. That's how you get one of the Chaos Emeralds. If anyone, throw in the comments if you remember what happens to Sonic when you get all of the Chaos Emeralds. I'm supposed to go this way, evidently. Dang it, Tails. Here the music remixes a little bit of the stages start to add more graphic flair you can see the parallax scrolling in the background it's just a fun game hello jeremy i'm glad that you were able to make it and the first one to comment thank you for very much for watching let's see first to comment yes you were you were the first to comment thank you dave for nice graphics i appreciate that ah now regarding the cross play Jeremy puts to me, crossplay on any game should be the future um, 
a big fan of cross play, cross progression, and cross buy. Jeremy, in the comment, why don't you tell me some titles that you would definitely buy if they had cross play and cross progression added to them that maybe you wouldn't normally buy? For someone who has the Xbox One and PS4, do I want to upgrade? Are they that much better? Hmm. You know, that's a very good question. And I know Jeremy put in a comment there. I think it all has to do with the games. If you're getting what you really want to play on your PlayStation 4, your Nintendo Switch, your mobile, um, your iOS device, even streaming, until they have the games that you want, then right now just kind of, well, for one, you can't really find them. But until then, a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox Series X or S, maybe just wait for the games. One of the good things, though, with the PlayStation 5 is they are having um, backwards compatibility with certain games and they kind of like forward compatibility where they allow like a next generation version. If you get a certain titles, then they come out with next gen versions of them. But Xbox, is, as you well know, is really good on cross compatibility, backward compatibility, forward compatibility. You're able to take more of your library, I feel, to the Xbox. So if you're playing a game on the Xbox One, then when you get an Xbox Series X or S, you're able to take your progression to that, and then they have next-gen visuals. Yes, Returnal does look really insane. I've watched a few trailers. Those, it's one of the games I'm hoping my PlayStation 5 friends will have, and they play it and let me know just how insane that is. And so when I pick it up, hopefully I'll pick it up and say there's something new to play every experience. But yeah, that's something I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Jeremy Holder... I don't think you're a big Pokemon fan, are you? Um, I don't know. You're going to have to let us know about that one. Jeremy is a contributor to our Delve team. He does have an Xbox Series X. He's really enjoyed it. We did a little uh, unboxing episode, a little unboxing mini episode here a little bit back. So he would be the one definitely to talk about. Maybe we'll get him on the show here and talk about some of the differences, some of the gameplay. He's saying huge difference. The graphics look amazing and better, but the real difference is load time. And it's so much of a difference that I don't even want to use my other two Xboxes. <laughs> wow. So what do you do with the other two then? Do you have them as doorstops or do you strategically place them around the house? Looking forward to Sonic the Hedgehog movie too. Definitely am too. Oh. I got Sonic Mania also. Love it. Which platform did you get? I am going to do an episode on where the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going. I did watch the trailer as well for Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I will, uh, I'm i doing research right now because I want to make sure, for one, I'm not going to spoil anything for people that haven't watched WandaVision and or The Falcon and Winter Soldier, even though the spoilers are out there. I just want to have a general discussion and talk about where the roadmap is for Series 4. What series, what movies do we have within the next two years? And just kind of talk about what is our expectations and what can we expect from it? But yeah, it definitely looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to watch that. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, yeah, Sonic to you. The original was the first tennis game I've, I've always been terrible at. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry to give you anxiety, but what Genesis game, um, when you had the Genesis, was there a series that you always were looking forward to playing or were hoping that they'd always come out with something? Because... There was a lot of Genesis titles. Yeah, I know last week you mentioned Vector Man. Were you excited, looking forward to Vector Man 2 when that was announced? Poor Tails took quite a beating there. Yes, I'm sorry, Tails. Tails is one of my favorite characters, and I did a big injustice to him. Dave, you're more of an RPG guy in sports. If you've got Xbox, have you played Fantasy Star Online 2 yet for the Xbox? Now, that's more of an action RPG that's one of the games, if I had an Xbox, I'd be playing pretty much every day. I'm a big Fantasy Star fan. Or you've seen the Diablo 2 remaster that I think is coming out. What are some RPGs that you're looking forward to? And, of course, sports games. Are you, do you like a boxing? Because there's a boxing game that I'm looking forward to. I'm going to talk about later in another episode that I think is going to be really awesome. Or is it like Madden NBA 2K and MLB The Show 2021? which is now not only on the PlayStation, but it's also on Xbox, and that's a first. I'm surprised that they don't. Um, Apex Legends had cross-progression. Maybe eventually. I, You know more about those games than I do, but it's just kind of like uh, Fortnite. You can cross-play 
and your cross progression, I think now it's pretty much through all platforms. Maybe one day I'll try to play Fortnite. Don't quote me. When I was younger, I loved the Koi games on the um, NES. Yes, Nabunga, um, Nabunga's ambition. Uh, Koi, Koi merged with Tecmo, or was it the other way around? But one game that I definitely want to play in a future episode is Hyrule Warriors, which is one of the first times that Nintendo has let another franchise, another company, to, with of course they helped develop with it, but they applied Hyrule Warriors. It was on the Nintendo Switch, in, um, not the Switch, excuse me, Nintendo Wii U. It came out for the Nintendo 3DS, and now the Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity has come out. That's one of those games that I want to pick up. So maybe in a couple episodes, I'll do a dive into that one. We'll delve into that. So, okay, now we know what Jeremy has. One server for the Ark, the other Xbox One S is my, yeah. And since all my game saves are on the cloud, I can play anywhere. And I think that's something too, is now we can go just take our devices and access the cloud. But with the caveat, the, even though the cloud, I think Xbox is doing a great job, not everyone has access to fast internet. Hopefully we get there because our infrastructure, we should be able to get fast internet and cross play. No, MLB The Show is on Xbox, I believe. I'll double check it. Xbox Series S, X and S and Xbox One. So, um, nope, it's a... Uh, oh! I have a friend that almost lives on place uh, Fantasy Star Online 2. Um, he always trying to get me to try it. You should try it. If you do, you probably played the original Fantasy Star Online. You probably will never, will probably never see again. And you have your original Intellivision. Dave, do you have that modded? So you can play on HD TVs or do you still have a CRT tube? Very good comments. I want to thank everyone for the participation in these comments. I want to thank everyone for watching in this episode theme of looking forward to. Again, there's always something in pop culture we can look forward to and we can always discuss. Whether it's a new comic book, a new game, a new movie, a new collectible, there's always something that we're looking forward to. But the big thing I think we want to take away is always enjoy what we have. And let's always talk about what we have and, and still with an eye to the future because pop culture is always going. Be sure to make sure you like and subscribe and let your friends know that every week Delve Live is on where we discuss everything pop culture. Check out my Facebook page, my YouTube page, and also Instagram where I'm going to start putting more um, specific comp um, content to those platforms. So again, I'm Tom Morris. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next episode of Delve Live.